Thank you, Alexis, Alexis uh, for that uh, generous introduction. Um, and also thanks uh, to the organizers for, for inviting me. Uh, it's a great privilege uh, to be here. Um, I'm going to talk about computational photography. And, you know, maybe it's faster, maybe it's cheaper, but arguably we can say that uh, this transition from film to digital hasn't changed photographer, photography fundamentally. Um, <clears throat> see. If we look at this really commendable effort of uh, a Kodak, you know, DCS series uh, early in the 90s, um, uh, married with a Nikon F3, uh, and if you just look inside that, you realize the film cartridge is still there. It's film to digital, but the cartridge is still there. Uh, and as my colleague Jack Tumblin likes to say, digital photography, uh, it's like a caged lion that after years you uncage in a jungle uh, and stays in one place rather than running off and exploring uh, the space around him. So we have a message here. We have uh, about a billion people with tools of uh, visual communication, but we're still following the principle of a human eye. Um, if you just look at the space of successful biological vision, it's, it's very diverse. You have based on shadows, based on refraction, based on reflection, Scallops don't have lenses. Light comes in and it gets reflected off of this concave mirror and uh, onto the sensor. Or lobsters have these vertical parallel mirrors that focus light on this curved sensor. And these are, these are biological creatures that are not even doing sophisticated computation afterwards. So we really have an opportunity to explore the space of imaging, the whole pipeline from capture to, to display. The way we have solved so far uh, the problem of photography and the problem of capturing and sharing visual information is we said, let's make the photograph compatible wh wh with what the human eye sees. So we try to mimic a lens that behaves like uh, the, the, uh, the cornea. And then we have a detector that mimics uh, the retina. And that's kind of the end of End of the story. That's your image. Um, and we have basically solved this problem of kind of matching my experience by reproducing what my eye will see. This is great for, for, for direct view, uh, but if you want to manipulate that and if you want to understand the world and do something additional with the photos, this model simply doesn't work. We need to go beyond just mimicking what a human eye can see. So if you think about in the wish list of of uh, photography, uh, these are the kind of answers we get. You know, if you ask the consumers, uh, they want amazing resolution, some kind of a, you know superhuman vision. Of course, high speed. They might be, they might want to see inside their bodies. Maybe it's a medical device uh, that becomes a camera. Uh, cameras that automatically trigger, maybe based on a smile or some external event. Um, and to deal with you know the millions of photos you take, you want to keep only the good pictures and find the most relevant ones. Uh, but I guess you know, the most common uh, request we get, uh, I'm sure uh, you hear about it all the time, is put the photographer somehow back into the picture. <laughs> so when I go on a trip, you know, I'm, I'm still in my own pictures. Uh, and of course, uh, many of you here deal with you know, these other wish lists. Um, cost, of course, uh, resolution, low light sensitivity, very challenging problems, right? Uh, stereo and 3D, we're going to hear uh, a lot about that. Um, and mechanical free motion uh, of, uh, of, for zoom and for focus, um, for improving sharing, auto-tagging, recognition, uh, and all these problems. And these are very critical problems, uh, and these are, I would say, are, are the, uh, at the top of uh, everybody's wish list. I'm going to go a little bit beyond that and see if I can kind of push the envelope of, of what we can dream. You know, can we create cameras 
and, and mechanism so that I can take a photo of what's around the corner beyond what's the line of sight. Or can I create cameras and, and, and software so that instead of a photo, what I get out is an emotive artistic rendering? So, so this talk really should be about, you know, kind of the wish list of, of uh, what computational photography can deliver beyond today's uh, digital photography. Uh, and by definition, um, as a wish list, not all these problems can be solved today. Um, but uh, what I will try to do is uh, kind of give you my own, share my own bias of, uh, of what kind of things uh, I wish for. Uh, and also tell you the kind of things I'm doing, my group is doing, and, and other people are attempting as well. And you're welcome to join and, and share your own thoughts uh, as well. Um, let's see. I think it's getting cut off. All right, we'll go with it. Uh, and the field of computational photography, we had a session here a couple of years ago, um, is, is looking at this problem in very interesting ways. Uh, on the, on the y-axis, we have kind of the complexity of capturing. Uh, down here, we have the, the goals of synthesis. Um, if you think about the digital photography, you capture the raw information, just, you know, photons to electrons at a good signal-to-noise ratio. And the synthesis is very low level. I just give you the pixels. That's it. Uh, you can go a little bit beyond that and start capturing high dynamic range, wider field of view, improve the resolution, maybe create a focal stack, uh, and so on. And then, uh, you know, m more spectrum, uh, capturing some non-visual data, such as GPS and uh, communication with other devices, metadata, image priors, and so on. And a lot of the work is focused on kind of this, this axis here. But the way computational photography wants to, wants to think about this problem is not just the low-level experience of photography, which is, as I said, kind of a direct impedance matching with your eye, but be able to manipulate and have a meaningful extraction of the semantics of those photos, of those photons. So you want to have some mid-level cues because, you know, even human vision we don't really care about absolute intensity. We care about regions and boundaries and segmentation and motion and what's foreground, what's background, what's lit directly by light, what is being, what's lit by uh, scattering of light, uh, and so on. And so we want to create mechanisms such as camera arrays and light fields and so on so that we can relight the scene or we can insert a visual object and so on. And as Alexis said, the human stereo vision is giving you this mid-level cues, but we don't have to stop at what the biology can do for us. We really want to create an augmented uh, human experience and create hyper-realistic synthesis uh, of our photos. And what I mean by that, let, let, let's go through that uh, one at a time. So my wish number one, uh, the ultimate post-capture control where very few decisions are taken at the time of capture. I should be able to just take out a camera, wave it, not worry about low light or motion blur or focus or the viewpoint, and snap away 